Good evening. I'd like to call this Thursday, April 22nd, meeting of the Tacoma School District Board of Directors to order. Would you please rise for the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the general counsel please call the roll? Yes, good evening. President Cobb? Here. Director Keating? Here. Director Strozier? Here. And uh, is Director Leon excused? Director Leon is excused. And I believe we're expecting Director Von Bright to, or Vice President Von Bright to arrive soon? Yes, she'll be here any minute. Great, thank you. And then our student representatives, uh, Jasmine Pearson? Here. And Nathan Essman? Here. And we have a quorum. Thank you so much. And we'll move on to item number four, adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? I move to adopt. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions about items on the agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the agenda, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is adopted. We'll move on to number five, recognition of staff, students, and community. 5.1, recognition of Gold Star Community Partner Award to Gray Lumber Company. All right. Good evening, um, board president, rest of the board of directors. I'm Amanda Scott Thomas, uh, director of the partnership office, and here to um, acknowledge and celebrate um, the Gold Star for the month of April. Um, giving you some background, you know that Tacoma Public Schools, we define partnership as a cooperative relationship between students, families, and school schools in the school district and the greater Tacoma community. Uh, partners are committed to supporting student academic success as well as success of the whole child. Partners work with and invest in the education of our children and youth whose future in turn will affect the quality of life in the whole Tacoma community. When it comes to student success, TPS recognizes that schools cannot do it alone. And in recognition of, a t of t um, an investment in time, resources and talent for TPS students, families and staff, the Gold Star Community Partner Award signifies honor and thanks to a community partner who has made a difference by doing what is best for kids. Today, we're going to be recognizing Gray Lumber Company. They've been import, an important part um, and family-based company in Tacoma for over a century. Whitman Elementary School was built across from their M Street location in 1952. And since that time, they have been a long history of partnership with Gray Lumber Company and Whitman Elementary. For the past several dec decades, Gray Lumber Company has gone above and beyond in, with their generosity in supporting Whitman student bodies with school supplies, enrichment supplies, financial donations, and even PTA help um, for the holidays. The company has helped support schools and classrooms uh, projects by donating supplies. They also make a yearly school supply donation, which goes to the individual students in need, as well as individual classrooms. Each year, their financial co contribution during the holiday season has helped schools to provide with holiday meals, new coats, new shoes, new clothing, and gifts for Whitman student students. This year, their donation enabled Whitman to give gift cards to 38 families for the holiday which supplied a meal as well as gift cards for holiday presents for those families. Whitman is grateful for the support of Gray Lumber Company and continues that in the, the, the support that they continue to provide for Whitman. They want to give an extra special thanks to Matt Harris, who is the logistic manager for um, his communication. And, his, and also they want to recognize Matt Gray, who is the president and sales manager. He also gives generously and makes personal uh, donations every year. So they want to honor them with the Gold Star Community Partner Award as a small token of their appreciation and their partnership with Whitman Elementary School. Uh, we unfortunately couldn't get a representative here tonight. They couldn't send somebody, but they give their thanks to the board and they said that they are also grateful for the partnership. So we have their award and one of the family liaisons is going to deliver that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Put my mic back on it. Thank you for the presentation and thank you to a Gray Lumber Company for the partnership. Item number six, superintendent's report, 6.1 COVID-19 updates. Um, Dr. Garcia, would you give the COVID update? 
Absolutely. Gentlemen, can we bring up this side deck? That's not our most recent one. We have an, another one. It's on the agenda, if we can click through the agenda. It was on our computers when we came out. It was on, the first slide was on the computer. No problem. There we go. Thank you so much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members of the board. Uh, as you know, school looks a little different. And here's a prime example of uh, how school looks a little different. Um, I saw some wonderful pictures of uh, some of our Meeker students taking uh, the PSAT this year. Uh, I think it was Wednesday. And uh, similar in lunchroom desk spread. So uh, unfortunately, we are still uh, dealing with COVID and uh, not just our schools, but as our community and, as you know, our nation and world. And I'm not getting any clicker, guys, so you'll have to click for me. Next slide, please. Just want to remind. Oh remind everyone uh, as we're moving through um, health and safety protocols are still uh, in effect. Um, want to remind everyone that it is very important that we take these precautions um, every day seriously, uh, that we mask up, that we use the family at out of stations. And if you're not feeling well, stay, please stay home. Even in these sunny times when we think that it's almost like we're back to normal, we're, we're still not back to normal. So check with your school if there's any information on dates or uh, anything along those lines that you're uh, having questions for. Next slide, please. So here's our current status. Uh, Pre-K through 12 are on-site options for students. Um, so that's exciting that we made that through right before spring break and we are well into the spring uh, and almost to May. Uh, high school sports, the third season is wrapping up at the end of April and the beginning of May. Um, that means that the last sports season of the year is right around the corner. And those are oftentimes what we could consider our traditional winter sports, basketball, wrestling, water polo. Um, so if you're interested in those uh, sports, please check with your school for school registration. Traditional spring activities are optional at our schools and we wanna make sure that folks understand that. Um, so there's a lot of traditional uh, spring activities. So what does that mean? Uh, fifth grade may look different than seventh grade or sixth grade. And so we didn't create a list, but you know, last year we were in a much different place where there was not guidance or the guidance was you could not do any of those activities. And so this year we're letting schools know in our communities that there is guidance. Uh, we must follow those Pierce County Health Department guidance, but it does allow us a little more flexibility this spring to have some traditional. And what does traditional mean? Well, um, schools will be looking at whether it's awards nights, uh, recognition of moving to the next grade level, uh, open houses. There is limitations, and those are not our local decisions, but rather the health department's decisions and guidance, and we'll be following those. Uh, currently, graduations can still happen in person, um, and we that's important because you know we as a county rolled back into phase two, and a lot of folks have been asking us, well, what does that mean? And so we're able to still do some in-person uh, graduations, and we have guidance around that. And so potentially, uh, the guidance, even if we roll into stage three, is the same. So just a, a clarity of that. If we roll into state, roll back even another stage as a county, we do not know what those implications are. And so uh, May, we are supposed to, as a state, once again, look at those numbers, but currently we are still planning for in-person graduation ceremonies. 
And unfortunately, there will be some limited seating capacity for guests, but we are planning for guests to attend. Uh, families will get more information in the next couple of weeks regarding graduation ceremonies, but we are not planning on moving this specific day. And so as families are planning their graduations uh, and we have those graduation dates on the calendar, we will still plan for those specific dates. We are planning for three feet seating when appropriate for summer learning, and that will give us good blueprints for what does the fall look like under this current guidance. Next slide, please. So what's next? And next slide, please. Uh, we continue to explore COVID testing opportunities and vaccinations. So I know that um, we've been talking about this, but it, uh, COVID vaccinations have continued to be a part of our work plan. Uh, we did another clinic this week. Uh, we have been trying to offer when seats are available to those to the broader community. Um, so you may see some advertisements even on social media that we have slots and that's for anyone that's eligible, right? 16 and above. Although we do not have a choice necessarily on which vaccination. So there may be a limitation to the clinic based on the vaccination. We do these in with our partnerships, and these are oftentimes uh, the Rankos, the Lincoln pharmacies. So it, it is truly an amazing opportunity with those partnerships. Volunteer staff COVID testing is still available. And then we are examining uh, COVID testing for the fourth season of sports for our students, um, because in the fall there will be COVID testing opportunities. Um, in addition, there are certain sports now that are required COVID testing in this fourth season and so we are looking and, and we're gathering information and meeting with the health department but families should expect that there should will be some fourth season sports covid testing some other spring activities to registration for the 2021-22 school year continues so we had a, an initial uh, uh, register by X, but we are still taking applications and we are doing a rolling acceptance of the tol program I've mentioned this a couple times, high school sports season's registration for the fourth season has begun. Graduation planning continues. Uh, we've talked about this, but just continue to, schools may choose to plan culminating events with phase two guidance. And then grades three through 12 will continue to remain in cohorts for this school year. Summer learning, there will be both in-person and remote learning options. And then there will also be some jumpstart activities and those traditionally happen in the August time frame. So families should still plan on that. And next slide, I believe that is our superintendent's COVID update for the evening. Thank you. Any comments or questions from members of the board? Director Keating? I just have um, one thinking about that vaccines and now that they're open to 16 year olds. Um, I know for my 16 year old, it was a, a bit of a challenge to make sure that we um, were able to find a clinic that had Pfizer because that's the only one that's been approved for 16 and up. So um, I'm in talking to other families. I know that um, sometimes it, it's hard to find out which vaccine is being used at certain clinics, but um, that I actually, we had a lot of success looking through the um, hospital systems um, because they have the capacity to store Pfizer. Um, so that was just a recent experience we had as a family that I thought I'd share. Thank you. We are trying to um, share in our advertisement 18 and eligible or 16 and eligible based on the local clinic's ability to provide that. And then uh, Superintendent Santorno has been working with Pierce County superintendents to advocate for the Pierce County Health Department to work with school districts to think about how do we work with the county um, to provide clinics and supports as well. Um, so we will continue to advocate that, not that every family has to, it's important that this is still voluntary. Um, and so, but we do wanna work to help with this. And then we're also working with uh, local community partners uh, to bring this resource to their communities as well. Um, just to follow up on the point that you just made when you talked about the work with the Pierce County superintendents and the County Health Department, is that to organize clinics specifically for 16 to 18 year old or for students age 16 and over? Is that what you're referring yeah. to? Yes, we Student have uh, throughout the year we have advocated to when we were able to do staff, let's work to bring uh, the resources to staff. We were unsuccessful to do that at that point. And so we have shifted our attention and energy to, um, uh, we have students and we have families that want their students to have that. Can we work with the county to health department to bring those resources to the school site and allow us to support those efforts? And 
Um, to date, we are still not have been successful, uh, mm -hmm. but we will continue as a, a, a county school district to work in that direction. Thank you. Any other comments? I just have one more follow up on the same topic. Is my only <laughs> question too. Um, is I don't know what the mechanisms are for. I'll ask this differently. When I got vaccinated, I got a little card with my, which is now my vaccine record. For students, we have records of their other, um, the, whether or not they've met the requirements for vaccination or had some exemption for all other vaccines that are required for school. I know this isn't a requirement for students, for anyone, but is there a mechanism to include their vaccination data with, like is there an online record of students' data different than adults who have been out of the system and been out of that vaccine land for a long time? Can we more directly update their record is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, schools have the uh, flexibility with students to help uh, record their vaccinations, which has been part of the advocacy for school districts to think about. We could upload these in the state system as we go along in there. Okay. Um, so there is a mechanism to do that. Um, right now, um, it is not being used probably to its full potential because uh, families are going in multiple places. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, traditionally, those things are updated in the beginning of each school year yeah. in there. And so um, we also have not been a putting pressure in a healthy way on anyone to you know tell us if they've been vaccinated. We're really trying to be sensitive. Okay, thank you. Any other thank you for the report. Moving on to item number 6.2, Mental Health Awareness Month Proclamation. The superintendent recommends that Tacoma School Board of Directors proclaim May 2021 as Mental Health Awareness Month in the Tacoma Public Schools community. I've asked uh, Laura Allen to come up and kind of talk about this proclamation. Thank you. Uh, great, I have the Mental Health 2021 Proclamation here. Whereas mental health is essential to everyone's overall health and well being, whereas all Americans face challenges in life that can impact their mental health, especially during a pandemic, and whereas our students in particular have encountered mental health, social emotional challenges due to isolation, decreased interactions, and in school experiences during the pandemic. Whereas compromised mental health has been associated with individuals and systemic discrimination that has deleterious effects on a range of mental health and physical health outcomes. Whereas prevention is an effective way to reduce the burden of mental health conditions. Whereas there are practical tools that all people can use to improve mental health and increase resiliency. Whereas mental health conditions are real and prevalent in our nation and here locally. <laughs> I can't lick my thumb. Whereas with effective treatment, those individuals with mental health conditions can recover and lead full productive lives. And whereas each business, school, government agency, healthcare provider, partner organization, and citizen share the burden of addressing mental health problems and have a responsibility to promote mental wellness and support prevention and treatment efforts. Therefore, I ask the Board of Direction, Directors tonight to hereby proclaim May 2021 as Mental Health Month in Tacoma Public Schools and call upon the citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools in Tacoma to commit our community to increasing awareness and understanding of mental health. And that steps, there are steps that citizens can take to protect mental health and the need for appropriate and accessible services for our students and all people with mental health conditions. Thank you. Um, for proclamations, do we do a roll call vote? Yeah. It's not required, but you can if you'd like. We need a motion now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to adopt item number 6.2? I move that we adopt um, item 6.2 and proclaim May 20, 2021 as the Mental Health Awareness Month for Tacoma Public Schools. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments on the item? Um, I would just like to say that I really appreciate that this is being brought to us and, um, and just acknowledging that mental health is a really key um, 
importance to our students, to our staff, and within our community, and that is something that we need to share. So I just am very grateful that this is something we get to acknowledge. So thank you. I'd like okay. to I'd like to add to that. I agree completely with Dr. Uh, Dr. Director Keating, and I'd like to say that um, I hope that we take the month of May um, to really have some deep and and and. Um, critical conversations, both at family levels and in communities, in, you know, with, with anyone we know to try and elevate the, um, the ability for people to talk about mental health in a really uh, non-threatening way. It's not, it's not a failure, it's not, it's not a problem. It, I mean, it is a problem, but it's not a, it's not a deficit. And I think that um, maybe this, this May we can start thinking about that as we talked in our, um, we went out and did those student listening sessions on mental health, and it was so incredible to listen to these youth talk about um, their own mental health and, and the struggles that they have. And, and, it, and they said they didn't have a lot of people that they could talk to about it and not be judged. So I'm just hoping that as a community, we think about this, and this is an opportunity because it's a, it's a, a way to talk about it. So just encourage all of us to do so. So thanks for bringing this forward. All those in favor of adopting item 6.2, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is adopted. Item number seven, members of the public wishing to address the board. We still continue to have in this kind of COVID hybrid way of meeting two options for, for members of the community to contribute to public comment. One option is to appear in person. We just ask that you let us know in advance that you'd like to participate and there are specific details on the website and included in detail on this agenda. The other option is to submit written comment, also comment in advance of the meeting. There are no written comments tonight, but I do believe we have a couple of people who are here that like to speak. So I'll turn it over to Superintendent Santoro. Thank you. Our first speaker is uh, Mr. Leroy W. Crawford, Jr. Good evening, everyone. Oh, I didn't realize the mic was that powerful. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, greetings to the board, uh, board president, the people that think this is Dr. Nolan. No? I'm Renee. Renee. <laughs> Superintendent Santorno and Dr. Garcia. Okay. So I remember those names, and I remember you, but we have never officially met. Anyway, I'll be brief. <laughs> I'd like to applaud TPS and its designated departments for its efforts toward the achievement of academic, academic equity. Um, I was particularly enamored by the crucial conversations that I participated in last month. The subject of, or topic of, building capacity came up. And upon reflection, I noted that it perhaps contained three important components. What happens at the central administration building? What happens at the school building? And what happens at TEA? Perhaps building capacity, I then thought, further suggests the actionable steps toward academic equity. In short, it may name the contemporary, contemporary work within which we are engaged. And if so, then that might mean that building capacity at the CAB, at each school, and at TEA uh, might need thoughtful, more thoughtful consideration, even though I know that you guys have taken under consideration, uh, as to what it might look like for the 2021-2022 school year. Based upon my current experiences, and by the way, I'm from McCarver Elementary, <laughs> Uh, my current experience at the school building level, I've learned this year that it will take a concerted effort. It's not a given, um, and it takes some work. Um, and in closing, I'm a fan of developmental theory. That's why I got into education. I was in another field before that. Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences suggests diversity always exists. So for example, even in homogenous groupings, 
oh, a variety of intelligences may be found. This might also suggest that achievement will display such diversity. If it does not, it may suggest that a tendency to value certain intelligences instead of all intelligences may exist. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is uh, Mr. Lane Alfonso. Good evening, and uh, thanks so much for allowing me this opportunity. I'm here to talk a little bit about uh, today. I I learned that the uh, league meet the championship for track and field next week, which is over a two-day period at Mount Tahoma, uh, will not allow spectators. And so I've come here to ask um, that we really try and try a little harder to come up with some creative solutions, advocate a little stronger for our, our student athletes. Um, I've talked to a couple of people in the district and, and worked with my board representative uh, and hopefully can find some solutions. So I just want to be here in public to just say, please, let's try harder. Some of these students, they'll be their last sports event in their high school experience. And for them, not their parents not to be there for that, uh, just seems like it's it's too big of a price to pay. And it, it I find it hard to think that sitting outside in a facility like Mount Tahoma Stadium uh, can't be managed safely in a way that can accommodate everyone's concerns and keep families and students together. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the speakers. Thank you. Well, we will move on to item number eight, the consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt the consent agenda? Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions about items of the consent agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is adopted. Item number nine, policy matters. There are no policy matters tonight. Item number 10, the financial report. A quarterly presentation on the financial health of the district will be made during regular board meetings on a quarterly basis. The next quarterly report is planned for May 2021. Monthly financial statements can be found on the district website at www.tacomaschools.org backslash departments backslash business and finance. Item number 12, curriculum and instruction. There are no curriculum and instruction matters tonight. Oh, item number 11, did I say 12? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Item number 12, business matters. 12.1, approval of interlocal agreement between Pierce Conservation District and Tacoma Public Schools for the Salish Sea Heroes Project. The Deputy Superintendent, on behalf of the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning, recommends that the Board of Directors approve the interlocal agreement between Pierce Con Conservation District and Tacoma Public Schools for the Salish Sea Horse Heroes, excuse me, Heroes <laughs> Project. <laughs> Is there a motion to adopt item number 12.1? I move to adopt uh, I'll second. Um, before we take a vote, Dr. Garcia, can you say a little bit more about this item? Yeah, it's, it's really, um, really cool. I'm just gonna say that, right? <laughs> so you have these multiple partners that are coming together and uh, the Pierce Conservation District, the Tacoma Nature Center, Orcas Love Rain Gardens, and the FOSS Seaport to offer different options for kids to learn. And then you have the Puyallup Tribe that's come in and, and donated um, uh, salmon to be released as part of the FOSS Waterway Seaport into the Swan Creek. And so students analyze data about macro invertebrates, which are what the little baby salmon eat. Um, in essence, and I won't get all these scientific terms correctly, so I apologize, but what are the right plants and shades and good habitat for uh, salmon to grow in there? And then uh, water quality, so how healthy water quality. And then they, they release the salmon in three parts of Swan Creek. So these community partners are doing virtual lessons where the students can then participate by collecting data and stuff. And so um, Angie Neville and the science team and curriculum instruction just done a fabulous job of building these partnerships. And, and so um, the Mitsubishi Corporation requires an aero local as part of it. So there's not a lot of money being exchanged necessarily that would drive a board action, um, but that it does require an aero local and why it's being brought to you folks tonight. Um, but a big thank you to those 
four key partners and then the Puyallup tribe for once again coming in and, and helping us uh, reach our kids and bettering our community and also our region. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions or comments from members of the board? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting item 12.1 say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is adopted. Item number 12.2, approval of additional funding for 33 ECAP slots awarded by Puget Sound ESD. The Deputy Superintendent on behalf of the Assistant Superintendent of Teaching and Learning recommends that the Board of Directors approve submission for FY 2020 in the amount of $197,202.39 and if awarded, approve expenditures of funds according to accepted guidelines. Funding source, Puget Sound Educational Service District. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt item number 12.2? I move to adopt. Is there a second? I second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments about the item? Can you explain the role that Puget Sound ESD plays in allocating ECAP slots? I can, but I would be afraid that I would uh, <laughs> misrepresent something. So I'm gonna ask uh, Ms. Murray Verhard to step up and um, who's our assistant superintendent. Thank you. Give you a more informed explanation. <laughs> Hello. Uh, the PSESD is the grant manager for the ECAP dollars. So compare that to Head Start, where we are the grant manager. We are responsible for how the grant is, and we complete the grant and apply for it. PSESD, on the other hand, applies for the ECAP grant, and then they give them out, so to speak, to the school districts or to organizations that have ECAP. We have been always advocating for more slots. We will never stop advocating. We want to see those numbers continue to increase. So this will afford us an additional program. So it's an AM PM. So there will be obviously a morning and an afternoon. Um, we're right now, you'll see in your Friday report tomorrow, looking at data, looking at our wait lists, our numbers to determine where is the best location. We believe we're close to making that decision and you'll see some more information in your Friday report. Thank you. Brett, can you just say too what the drivers of how these slots are allocated are? Are there any built-in drivers that speak to demographics or anything like that across school districts, or is it just apply and, and ask and see what you get? Both ECAP and Head Start have um, a family income level mm -hmm. that families must um, you know, fall within in order to have their students placed in the slots. Although this year, I will tell you that a new um, regulation has come out from ECAP stating that while we had a cap of only a certain percentage of students who had an IEP could be placed, now they are removing that cap and saying any student, regardless of income, with an IEP can be served in ECAP. So that is a new um, component to our grant that we're very excited about. And then we have some local flexibility to move programming to as long as the students meet those criteria. So one of the things that um, both Marie and Michelle are constantly looking at is the data and access to the neighborhood and the neighborhood school. And do we have program that families can access? So we have been over the last few years looking at trying to provide access within the neighborhood via the neighborhood school to these slots, which sometimes means uh, a school may have had traditionally two or three of these classrooms where we move a classroom to another school which doesn't have one um, because there are kids inside that school that didn't have one that should have access to stay within their neighborhood. I appreciate that clarification. And in addition, does Puget Sound ESD have any guidelines about how they allocate slots to districts? Like, do does it depend? Is it just a matter of us applying for and asking for them, and just and waiting to see what Puget Sound ESD does, or do they have some parameters within their grant that says how they have to, at a minimum, allocate those slots? They do, and they also look at trend data, demographics. They look at you know birth rates in the areas and the communities, and they also, quite honestly, look at how good of stewards we are as a school district to managing and monitoring the compliance. Because you know, um, President Cobb very clearly, as well as Director Vice President Director Bombright, how 
strict and stringent the compliance regulations are for both Head Start and ECAP. So we, um, you know, they only have so many slots because they only receive so much money from the federal government. So therefore, they look at the districts. We have been on their list for the last two or three years asking for additional expansion slots. They also look at our enrollment data. They look to see how full we keep our programs. Mm -hmm. One of the requirements of Head Start and ECAP is that we have 100% um, enrollment at all times. So that is a goal that we strive for. Now next year, we uh, are going to be working very hard at getting our enrollment back up. And we believe as soon as things begin to calm down a little bit and families are ready, uh, those slots will fill up very, very quickly, just as they always do. We typically have a waiting list in ECAP. Mm -hmm. So this is exciting. We're looking at those regions across our district where we traditionally have a wait list so that we can accomplish accommodate those families in that area. Thank you. I'll stop going on, but now my mind is spinning at the state level, the state <laughs> ECAP allocations and how the need is identified and those dynamics around keeping slots filled and it's very interesting. I appreciate the context. Any other comments or questions? I, I have a question um, in thinking about the increase in um, slots for students with IEPs that makes me think about staff support for those students and, and I guess I'm curious how that would be, um, how that need would be met um, mm -hmm. as the, I mean, it's very exciting mm -hmm. um, and just curious about just knowing that the, the student support would needs would increase with mm -hmm. um, a higher level of um, students with IEPs. That's correct. and. You know, we, we have a continuum of services. That's one of the beautiful pieces about Tacoma Public Schools. In preschool, we have a continuum. We have some least restrictive, and then we have some more higher needs, such as our extended day programs. So there are students quite often that come through Child Find and through our system that don't need as much support. They might need a more minimal, maybe social emotional or speech or OT. So we actually, it's a great question, um, Director Keating. This year, we are actually using part of our Head Start and our ECAP dollars to fund uh, a teacher, a, a, a special education teacher who will service those students in the various classrooms. Now, granted, they wouldn't be able to meet all the students in the schools because that would be a large caseload, but they can meet as many as possible. And where we can't, where that teacher may or may not be able to, to provide services by traveling around, then the school's LRC teacher who provides support to the kindergarten through fifth grade students provide that SDI for those students. So one of the things that you have done with your um, strategic plan goal, we are working very hard to have a P5, a P12 system, if you will. And so really embracing those preschoolers and those elementary schools and calling them their own um, is what our goal is always. So this new itinerant teacher that we'll be hiring will provide services to as many students, as I said, that, that can they can and then where there are students that perhaps are more in a certain area or demographic or legit uh, around the district and different um, geographical areas then the LRC teacher within that school steps in and provides those services thank you just one other exciting uh, note for our community that's connected to this is we recognize that there are other community partners that are providing high quality preschool programming. And uh, unfortunately, there's a, a huge need in uh, the county and in the city. So these slots are not going to solve those needs. But there has been legislation this year that has moved through that is supporting the efforts of early learning at a whole other level. And so that's really exciting. We don't know all the implications for that, but that would be targeted not just um, for these kinds of programs, but more broadly. And so um, I think there's gonna be continued investment, it appears, by our state to continue to fund and support early learning, uh, preschool programming. And that doesn't mean that it's just inside the school system. Okay.
Vice President Baum Great. Yeah, um, thank you for mentioning that, Josh. I was going to bring that up if you didn't. And um, the other piece around back to ECAP and Head Start funding is the great thing about getting more kids in the ECAP and Head Start programs is that there's wraparound services that are um, holistic for family support and family engagement um, that are uh, show critical, um, critically positive results for both the children and the families in terms of moving um, out of poverty mm -hmm. and um, also getting higher education, both the parents and the and the yeah. kids. So, it's um, a great program. So every child we can get mm -hmm. in is 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 a, another one we've helping down the road. And um, and yes, I, I they just passed the bill that um, would increase significantly the funding for for child care and early learning programs. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, this um, COVID. Uh, pandemic has really decimated the community-based child care system that we had just spent 30 years building. So um, it's coming at a good time. And I know that um, there are a lot of families out there that are deeply in need of this. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, I'm glad and proud of Tacoma Public Schools for being a player in that and working with partnership with the community-based programs that are doing great work with the zero to, especially with the zero to five um, population of, of students, but are um, struggling financially because of, of um, the mm -hmm. limitations that they've been put under. So thanks for continuing to partner. And I would be remiss if I didn't just take this very fast opportunity to use this as a way to advertise our programs. We have openings and for our families at home who are listening, we encourage you to go to our website and fill out an application. We also offer full day ECAP programs, half day ECAP programs, full day Head Start programs and others. So we'd love to see your little ones in our program next year. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting item 12.2 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is adopted. Item number 12.3, approval of bid acceptance for Browns Point Elementary School right of way improvements. Good evening, board of directors. The executive director of planning and construction for the chief operating officer recommends that the board of directors accept the bid for the right of way work improvements at Browns Point Elementary School for from two CN sons in the amount of $996,000 excluding sales tax. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt item 12.3? My motion to adopt. Is there a second? Second. And moved and seconded. Any questions or comments about the item? Um, Morris, can you say a little bit about um, the right of way improvements? Does this require a lot of engagement with the city? Yes, it does. And actually, we're able to do this because at the time when we were building Browns Point Elementary, building Browns Point Elementary School, we didn't actually have enough money in the budget to finish that. So what the, what the city has done with us on that project and a couple of others in our 2013 bond program was allow us to come back and do that work once we had bond dollars, which were approved last year by our taxpayers. So mm -hmm. we've got this program here and we'll also have one over at Mary Lyons Elementary as well. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Good. Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting item 12.3 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is adopted, thank you. Thank you. Item number 13, other business. 13.1, approval of superintendent-elect Joshua J. Garcia's contract. Oh, the president of the board. <laughs> That's me. The president of the board recommends that the board ratify the attached contract to superintendent-elect Joshua J. Garcia, effective July 1, 2021. Just by way of background, um, this action item reflects the work that the board has been doing related to transition planning in response to a notification by Superintendent Santorno of her planned retirement as of June 2022. Um, is there a motion to adopt item 13.1? I move that we adopt item 13.1. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments about the item? Seeing none, I'll call for a roll call vote. Yes, thank you. President Cobb? Aye. Vice President Bombright? Aye. Director Keating? Aye. And Director Strozier? Aye. And the contract is ratified four to zero. Thank you. Moving on to item number 13.2, mutual agreement modifying Carla Santorno's contract. The president of the board of directors recommends that the board accept Carla Santorno's offer to serve as superintendent on special assignment and modify her existing contract as follows. One, 
Superintendent Santorno and the board agrees that for a term commencing on the first day of July, 2021 and ending on the 30th day of June, 2022, she will relinquish the role of superintendent and instead Santorno shall perform the duties of superintendent on special assignment of Tacoma School District number 10. And number two, will report to the superintendent of Tacoma Public Schools and shall be considered an exempt cabinet member. Santorno's duties shall be assigned by the superintendent, but may include providing transition assistance to the new superintendent and furthering the district's equity initiatives. Is there a motion to adopt item 13.2? My motion to adopt item 13.2. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments by members of the board? Seeing none. Um, will the general counsel please call the roll? Yes. President Cobb? Aye. Vice President Bombright? Aye. Director Keating? Aye. And Director Strozier? Aye. The motion to modify Superintendent Sanford's contract is ratified 4 0. Thank you. Moving on to reports to the board. Um, there are none tonight. Moving on to item number 15, board comments and reports. As I like to do, and I think we all like to do, we'll start with our student board members, see if they have any report or comments tonight. Mr. Espin, come on up. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, so tonight I'd like to say, um, I wanna echo what Mr. Alfonso said earlier during public comment. I am a track athlete myself um, and I, I think it is important, um, especially for a league, that there should be some way to get spectators to visit. So I just yeah, I want to echo what he said. You know, creativity is key, I think, there. So any um, attempt or ideas on how to get that to work would be fantastic for all the athletes, uh, especially the seniors who are, you know, this may be the last event, like he said, for any of us. So, yeah. Um, and then also, uh, I, the Mental Health Awareness Month proclamation, um, that's a, yeah, I appreciate that. So just yeah, those conversations, I, I think they should be encouraged this month. And just talking about mental health in general is always important, especially now. Um, I think for a lot of students, that's, you know, it's the pandemic itself has impacted them a lot more than some people may, may think. So I think those conversations are important. Um, and then also I, I have a question. Uh, so. Graduation, I know we talk a lot about what it's gonna look like for uh, people who wanna attend, but do we have any idea of like how it'll be for the students? Um, is there any information on that yet? Well, it Deputy Superintendent Garcia. So it has not been finally tuned, but uh, I think that students should anticipate that they will be in a cap and gown, uh, that they would be uh, uh, lined up six feet apart from each other. Uh, we are planning for uh, uh, a complete graduation class to attend. So I think you will hear rumors of different districts maybe doing it in cohorts. Uh, that is not our intent. So that uh, does provide some limitations on a variety of things. Uh, it should be noted that uh, there are different rules for different kinds of events. And so that's really hard sometimes for uh, people in the community and say, well, what about this event versus this? So graduation has its own special rules, which will be allowed in this. Um, there will be an opportunity for students to have their pictures taken in their caps and gowns, but it may not be the traditional way that they've had with other dignitaries and others. Uh, but we are planning for them to um, creative ways like how do we allow them to remove their masks to get their pictures taken in there. Um, there will still be speeches and there will be a balance of um, some level of um, probably pre-recorded activities because guidance doesn't allow us to do certain activities, but we want there to be there. Uh, we are planning for the ceremonies to also be live streamed. So if a family member cannot attend for whatever reason, um, that is part of our traditional practice. Mm -hmm. So if there's a family member across the world and they have internet access, they would have that. Um, at this point, I think I'm gonna pause because I want there to be a little bit of excitement for you. <laughs> you get there, right? So okay. uh, that, that's kind of a high level uh, what there is. Um, there is a group of folks that are working on this pretty regularly and almost daily, um, examining every possibility. But once again, the guidance is different um, than some of our other activities. And so we're in constant communication with the health department and what does that look like? And um, we will continue to think how we can make it, um, I hate to use the word traditional, but maybe um, special for you folks inside the day. 
Okay. Thank you. And because yeah. I think you should anticipate that we may not, you know, you may not be able to get eight tickets, you know, for all your family. It's going to be a limited, so that's going to be hard. Yeah. Um, you know, we certainly are going to do the best we can. Okay. Well, thank you for that information. It's good to hear that you guys are working on it. So, yeah. Um, and I think that's all I have for tonight. So, thank you. Thank you. On that graduation point, as much as I say that I don't, like, it's clammy to shake every student's <laughs> hand, but I'm missing the shaking of the hand. So, I'm just looking forward to understanding what our role looks like in these two, because... I miss all those clammy hands. <laughs> we all are going to need to remember as we're unpacking this. Um, there are things um, us as adults, we, we may not be able to participate yeah. in order for kids to participate. And that includes us as staff members um, in some of the activities in there. So we'll, we're looking at creative ways. We haven't decided if we're going to ask board members to do an interpretive dance or not. But we will, um, <laughs> nothing's off the table yet. Um, but we have raised the question around some of the things like shaking hands and, you know, mm -hmm. taking pictures with masks. And, mm -hmm. you know, our, uh, the, uh, Ms. Lori Carnes at the health department has done a phenomenal job of trying to work with us to try to make this as special as possible. Yeah. And so the good news, and we all mm -hmm. have to mask up and take care of this, because if we roll back as a county again, yeah. it is not a Tacoma Public Schools decision. It is a county decision, and these are county guidelines. And so um, mm -hmm. it's very imperative that we all try to continue to combat the best we can COVID-19. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. I will say, though, one of the most awkward parts, the shaking of the hand feels very, like, we can get that together. But the picture is always messed up. So we're always, like, trying to get in there. So maybe if we're just, our job is to stand there and be ready for every picture, maybe we'll nail pictures this year. Maybe that's our win. I keep suggesting a cutout, but nobody painted Nobody, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so just, our priority is just to make sure that our graduates are oh. able to take a picture. It's not about us. Oh. And there, so I just I want to congratulate each one. I don't want to unfold everything, but I also think it's very important that is is that um, we're looking at this to say in 20 years from now yeah. that graduate we don't want them to have to wear a mask in that picture right. if they mm -hmm. don't have to mm -hmm. and so that may limit you know principals being in pictures yep. board members being in pictures mm -hmm. and there um, we have to think about all kinds of things like ADA accessibility to whatever the facility uh, parking egress capacity and so we're not quite year, there yet, but we are working really hard to try to find as many ways possible to bring in as many people to celebrate in this moment that we can within the guidance in a safe way. Thank you. Ms. Pearson, any report tonight? Um, I don't have much of a report. I was also going to ask about graduation, but that was a very thorough <laughs> answer. Um, I guess I just wanted to also um, say I really appreciate the recognition of a um, especially with May 1st, for, sorry, for um, seniors. I know it's decision day for a lot of people who are planning to go um, to college or whatever, so I know there's been a lot of stress with that, so it's nice to know that. You know, our community is there for us. Everyone's like thinking of us and trying to support us in different ways. I really appreciate that. Um, and just a little update on, I guess, what school has been like. Um, I think it, it was less like anxiety inducing than I thought it was going to be. I was really nervous when I first started in person, but everyone's been like really considerate. We've all been following the protocols, and I think. In a way, because of the situation we've all found ourselves in, we're <laughs> we're all trying to reach out to everyone. I've noticed a lot more students checking in on other people, making sure they're okay. Um, and so I just want to shout out, I guess, students um, uh, and how we've been really coming together as a community despite everything going on. Thank you. That's great to hear. And just to both of you, as you identify the next steps in your plans, we, there's no pressure from us for you to share them, but we'd love to celebrate you as you have updates that you're wanting to share with us. Madam President, I've already been after them, and I already have a lot of insider trader information, and uh, not that they've decided, but 
it's just darn right exciting. And when they decide to tell you, and I think that we can probably anticipate that sometime in the middle of May, maybe we can ask that question again in, in there. But talk about phenomenal accomplishments wherever they decide and the choices they have. It is downright exciting. <laughs> I hope you hear from us all that we're really excited for you all to take this next step. And we really are just feeling really, I think, speak for all of us to say we feel fortunate that we had this time to, I mean, we still have more time, but that we've had this time to get to know you both and to work with you in this way and look forward to hearing about your next steps. Um, going to board reports from members of the board, maybe I'll start with Vice President Bonbright. Okay. Yeah. Although now my... Curiosity is peaked. I can't wait um, to hear what's what's coming next for you two. Um, okay, so uh, well, this I'll start with this this afternoon. Um, there was the weekly WASDA webinar that uh, both Director Keating and I uh, participate on, and I'm I'm going to leave you to give the details on you know any topical things that might have happened during it, um, legislatively and otherwise. But one of the um, exciting parts was is that Tacoma Public Schools um, we gave a presentation to. Um, at that meeting, which uh, was a statewide webinar for all the uh, school district directors in the state. And um, we presented with, uh, she's still here, Laura Allen. Yes, there she is, yep. our director of Whole Child and Dr. Garcia, um, our so uh, deputy superintendent and I presented on um, Tacoma Public Schools innovation regarding social emotional learning and um, mental health and what we're doing and what we've been doing in the district um, over the past couple of years, but in primarily through this COVID uh, pandemic to address the needs, social, emotional, and mental health needs of our students. And uh, it started with a description of our role as board members, because obviously the audience was board members from other school districts. And really, um, I was actually surprised, I guess, I don't know why, but. Uh, because there was so much enthusiasm. And of course, we can't tell when you're on this, this it's a go-to meeting and you can't see it. There's no people, you just hear. It's an auditory experience. Um, and we, you showed the presentation, but nobody can see each other. And um, But I did get a call from, from uh, the executive director after saying that his um, the chat box was blowing up when we were talking and everyone was so excited about what we were sharing and, and the great um, work that we're doing here. So I wanted to say that publicly so that um, uh, Superintendent Santorno, you and your team have been just doing an amazing job in mm -hmm. all of that. And, and I wanted to say to my colleagues that I really appreciate the way we've been working together to address the issues around social emotional learning and mental health of, of the students and the staff. And um, so, yeah, so I just thought, thought that was exciting and I hope that everyone um, you know, digs in deeper because we are not even close to done on this. Um, so that was today. Uh, also, last meeting was the first, right? So it was the next day we had the big JMAC with Joint Municipal Action Committee meeting where we um, are working with a consultant and the other elected officials and executives, um, some um, govern governing bodies in our community to look at how we can deal with building a, deal with the challenges around building a more equitable um, society and community, um, building community wealth, addressing um, health and public health and safety, and, um, and looking at um, you know, justice and equity across the board. And we're moving closer and you know, e each meeting we're, we're diving in to, to get a better sense of how we can uh, work collectively as a community. So you know, that will be a continuing update over the next few months. Um, I think as far as community events, I think we were all at Downing Elementary, oh, except for uh, President Cobb wasn't, but the other um, um, Director Strozier and De Director Kitty and I and Deputy Director Garcia were at <clears throat> Downing Elementary for the groundbreaking um, also that next day, which was pretty exciting. And, and then I don't know how many of you participated, but Graduate Tacoma had an equity conference um, last week. God, it's all a big blur. Anyway, and it was it was quite good. It was excellent and uh, participated on in many, um, several, um, uh, I guess it's a conference. So it was, you know, workshops and listened to some of the um, uh, 
you know, the, the full on presentations. And it was, it was really interesting. Um, did anybody else join? Do that? Yeah. Only for parts. It, yeah, it was, it was actually quite good. And, and it, the topic of equity was, um, it was interesting how different folks interpreted it. And I thought one of them, and I left my notes at home, but um, one of them was actually the students on the uh, mayor's youth summit, um, youth, youth commission, spoke about mental health. And uh, that one was uh, really particularly interesting to me because it was right along what our conversations, um, and, and they were talking um, about the comp, and they were actually talking to students. It was a presentation that was that they were hoping students were going to participate in. So that was pretty exciting to hear how they um, engaged each other in that tough conversation. So that's it for me. Thank you. Director Keating, any report tonight? Um, I don't really have, I'm, I really wanted to hear more about the WASDA. The, the WASDA um, presentation was really amazing and um, I'm really grateful to um, Laura Allen and Josh and Elizabeth for presenting today. It just was really exciting. Um, and I didn't attend Graduate Tacoma at a um, scheduling conflict, but I'm now I'm trying to remember the name of the event that I attended that was um, around um, youth. Oh, gosh, it's a program. I can't remember, but it was like last Friday. Oh, yeah. Um, do you remember what it's called? It was attached to the Washington Wellness Campaign. Wellness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really very interesting. Um, and the students, there were four students, um, two from Tacoma. Um, one was from Lincoln. And I, I think the other one was from Mount Tahoma. And then there were a couple other students. But they really, they shared the impact of COVID on, that it had had on them and their mental health. And just to start, it was really powerful to hear from these students. Um, and I don't have their names in front of me, but um, it was a really powerful um, event that um, I hope there will be more of. So, um, and as far as legislatively, um, sun Sunday is the end of session. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, still time for things to happen, but uh, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot to report on that. So. Great. Dr. Strozer? No real report, but I did want to draw attention to something. Um, in enhancing skills and building resumes is one of the uh, many keys to success post high school. I wanted to draw attention to the fact that I think it's nine students over the past month have earned some sort of certification in Tacoma mm -hmm. schools. So we got eight forklift certifications. And then we had one individual who from Oakland who earned a child care basics certification. So like in order to level up, you gotta be intentional about these things. A lot of this stuff happened over spring break. So I just wanna tip my hat to not only the students, but the staff who made it possible for uh, these young people to, to add some things to their resume. So that's, that's huge for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for raising that. Um, no one mentioned it, so I'll just make sure to note that we met a couple of days ago for our retreat. <laughs> and I think we had a good conversation from my perspective. I'm looking forward to continuing the conversations about how we approach our p review of our policies with more of an equity lens and thinking about including community voice in that process. I think that there's a few great things coming on that front. And just thinking about how we engage with other boards and committees and think about our own learning and professional development. So again, I'm excited to continue those conversations Related to them, I, I met with the um, president and CEO. I don't know if that's actually her title. Um, Tafana, at Graduate Tacoma, the Foundation for Tacoma Students this week. Um, and I think it's a good time for us to be thinking about our roles and boards and committees, and in particular, that partnership. We have lots of ways that members of our staff touch um, that team and touch the strategy work that they're engaged in, but just how we show up as board representatives in partnership with their board to move that strategic plan forward and to refine it. I think we're at a good place to be clearer about our perspective on how we engage to bring that to that team's work too. I also sat in on most of the Head Start Policy Council meeting this time around. They had a packed agenda, really good attendance. I actually feel like having participated in those meetings at some level before COVID. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like this this um, Teams mm -hmm. forum has provided a greater opportunity for folks to engage. I don't know if that's true, but anecdotally that seems like my experience. It's, it's harder, I think, to facilitate discussion 
in that context, maybe because you're kind of just moving through an agenda and, and much in a way like we are. But just for people to access the meetings and to be able to get there, it does feel like that's been an improvement for them in terms of attendance. But again, I, I just like that connection and think that we should continue again to think about how we engage on these committees and what our role is and what we try to bring forward and how we act as liaisons or members of all of these groups. Um, also, I just wanted to echo some of what's already been said about Mental Health Awareness Month. And it, like we all talk about reducing stigma and just making it a more um, common conversation. And I love the inclusion of prevention in the proclamation, and just thinking about how we prevent the need for mental health intervention down the road when that's possible. And I just, I don't know what's up with us in this country. Mental health, physical health, <laughs> It's just health in general. We're not that good at like thinking through a prevention lens and normalizing exercise and movement unrelated to your weight. Like just it's good for us. So I think the more that we can promote awareness of mental health in particular and to just normalize taking good care of ourselves and each other is a good thing. Um, I don't have any additional comments or report. Any other follow up comments from anyone? Madam President, I. I I think it's important, and uh, Director Keating, you may, uh, I know you play a critical voice in WASTA, but it should not be go unnoted that uh, Vice President Bonbright did an amazing job today in the presentation, and it wasn't a staff presentation. That, uh, you know, having a representative that allows people to see the work that's happening and knowledgeable at that level is good for the state, it's good for the district in there. And so it was very apparent to the staff that participated that um, both Director Von Bright and Director Keating have are, are trusted voices in a state organization that uh, allows Tacoma to have voice in there. And so I just, I think it's important that we recognize that uh, this was not a staff presentation. This is Director Von Bright really leading the charge and mm -hmm. um, raising the importance of uh, the Tacoma Mall Child Initiative at yeah. a state level. So when she says there was great turnout uh, re response, kudos to Director Bonbright. Yeah. Thank you for raising that. And I think it's important for us to linger on that just a little bit longer. I, From my perspective, now having been here the longest out of all of us, I felt I feel very much like when I came onto the board, there was a heads down, we're doing this work perspective, and which was nothing wrong with that at the time. But it was that. We weren't picking our heads up a lot as board members to think about how we share the stories and communicate with our colleagues in WASDA. Um, we did some presentations at like NSBA, our national association, but it wasn't like built into um, our ongoing um, way of work. But definitely, as you all came onto the board, you very f early on, it was like, we need to be more active and engaged. And so I do want to applaud you both, um, Lisa and Elizabeth, for setting that as a goal and in a very short time, getting your foot squarely in the door and making sure that people were aware of some of the good things that are happening in Tacoma. Even Director Strozer, I think you were maybe two weeks in and put your hat in there for a WIAA um, yeah. opportunity on our regional. One week. One weekend, <laughs> put your hat in to be like considered for <laughs> that leadership role. So I, I think just think it's a great time in Tacoma. We've got, um, a lot of good systems built that we can rely on to help keeping us mo keep moving us forward so we don't have to have our heads down as much. And now we can kind of look up and share the stories. So congratulations to all of you. And I just want to add one thing too, because when I came on, it was really um, former board director Hines that actually really encouraged me to go to the national conference. And that allowed me to actually I mean, a month in, maybe six weeks at the most into um, being sworn in, I was in D.C. and spending some really quality time with directors from across Washington State and with WASDA. And so that really um, energized me um, to, and, and gave me an opportunity to um, lean 
in and listen to other board directors who have been doing this work um, in in all different kinds of um, school district settings, not just urban. So it was it was just like um, it was a really great gift, I think, that um, Scott Hines um, gave me. And then Elizabeth and I were just sort of like Wonder Twins and we we're like, let's go. <laughs> and um, and it's just been really it's also been such a great um, space for me to grow as a policymaker. And so I really appreciate, you know, I enjoy the, the time I put in um, and I love having Elizabeth uh, by my side to do that. So because she catches whatever I didn't. So the amount of time that you folks have to put in to be knowledgeable, to speak and uh, the homework is uh, is very impressive. And I think that's sometimes lost in the conversation is you don't just show up. You have to do a lot of homework to be a part of those things. And so just um, I know Laura and I were quite proud to be a part of an organization where the board is knowledgeable enough mm -hmm. and invested enough in the work that's happening. So thank you. Thanks. Any additional comments? Seeing none, we'll move on to item number 16, announcement of future board meetings. The board will meet on Thursday, May 13th, 2021 at 6 p.m. for our regular business meeting, and that will be here at CAB. We'll meet on Thursday, May 20th for at 6 p.m. for a study session that will be on Teams. Maybe we should indicate this on the agendas moving forward. And then we'll meet on Thursday, May 27th at 6 p.m. for our regular business meeting. Again, that will be here at CAB. And seeing no further comments, we'll move on to item number 17. We are adjourned.